What if I told you you've been fed lies about men and masculinity that are pushing great men away and making it harder for you to meet your ideal guy without you even knowing it? And what if I told you that with a few shifts in approach and understanding, you can significantly cut down the time it takes for you to meet the guy you want and even make your relationship stronger? If this sounds interesting to you at all, this is exactly what I'm about to reveal on my video today. The conversation about masculinity and femininity in this world and this day and age has been bastardized a lot. And my hope through this video is that through a more nuanced conversation around what moves men to take action and who we are in our hearts, that you can make better choices, that you can attract more awesome men into your life, and that you can significantly cut down the time it takes between the time you put yourself out there and start dating to the time you get engaged with an amazing guy who meets your needs. The first lie that I'm going to be talking about right now is the lie that men feel less than women. I think the way we are socialized, the way we learn as men to show up in the world cuts down our ability to express more of who we are. But study after study, psychological studies, even clinical studies, medical studies have shown that men have as much emotion as women, but we tend to not express it as much. We are not taught that it's okay to express emotion. We're taught to keep things in, to keep it tough, to toughen up, to not cry. And it becomes challenging sometimes for men to express their emotions. So women connect with guys and they think, well, naturally, he must feel a lot less because he's not sharing it with me. I think if you cut down this idea and you have a higher expectation of the way your guy will show up and you create a bit more space to recognize that if he's given the right context, he might share a lot more. If he's given the right combination of vulnerability and also presence, that he might be very willing to share what's in his heart, in his mind, and dance that vulnerability dance where you share a little bit more, he shares a little bit more. And I think that what you're ultimately going for is this concept of masculinity as a very black and white alpha type of male that for the most part will not be as open emotionally, will not be as connected to what your needs are, will be more of his way or the highway and kicking ass and taking names, which is great in some respects, but not necessarily for the level and the depth that women in this day and age are asking for and calling for. The biggest complaint I hear from female clients is that they are looking for connection that goes beyond the basic, something that is more depth engaging, something that includes more emotions. And for that to take place, you need to be willing to be open to the idea that men are far more emotional than they're letting out. And then as a result of you understanding that men are more emotional than you might have thought of before, A, ask more of men in a way that's not demanding, but also not letting them get away with not expressing <laughs> their emotions, but B, also choosing men who have more of that capacity to share what's in their mind, in their heart, in their expression. If you're between a guy who is highly of the kind that you may be going for, kicking ass and taking names, but unwilling to share more of him with you, and another guy that you feel is not as alpha as this dude, but he has the capacity to go deeper and ask better questions, that you take one extra second before you dismiss him as not the guy you want because it's not masculine enough, that you get a chance to really consider what he might bring to the table and what that might do throughout the course of a lifetime of connecting with someone. <laughs> Line number two, if he's masculine, he'll pursue me. And here's what I have to say about that. I think that men have an ability to pursue and to go for what they want. At the same time, I think men need an opening first before they go there. They need to understand that you're emotionally open. They need to understand that you are interested. They need to understand that there's some part of you that is really looking for a connection and a relationship, that you're not playing poker face, that you're not playing, I'm interested in him, but I'm going to lay back without expressing anything so that, no, that you're not playing games with him. I think that sometimes when women feel that if he's just masculine enough, he's going to pursue me, that they show up in a way that is not open, that sometimes is not expressive, and sometimes it's not vulnerable. 
almost like carrying that fierce independence inside of you where I don't need anyone in my life. Well, if you don't need anyone, why are you in a relationship? I think you can have an amazing life on your own and still need more connection, still need more depth, still need more understanding, still need more of that juice that only happens in synergy with another human being. So if you've been playing it too cool, too laid back, and you're asking yourself the question, why are men not pursuing me? That you go a little bit more into the vulnerable space of sharing more, expressing more, and showing up with enthusiasm and aliveness in such a way that the guy can genuinely gauge that there's interest in you, that he doesn't have to break through walls and cut through barbed wire to get to connect to the fire in your heart, but that the fire in your heart is showing up consistently enough, presently enough, where guys can identify it from a mile away if necessary. If you show up that way, you will have more of that pursuit that you're looking for. Lie number three, masculine guys are not intimidated by women. If he's intimidated by you, then he's not masculine enough. Here's what I have to say. Sometimes the guys are intimidated by women, regardless of how strong, how awesome they are. Why? Because they're human beings. Because they might see something in you that feels exciting, but scary at the same time. So the fact that a guy is intimidated by a woman doesn't mean he's not masculine enough. It just means that he might need more of that connection, and more of that openness to recognize the common areas of interest, common areas of values, so that despite the differences, despite the fact that you may have an amazing career, he's still interested in connecting with you. Also, and not to break a bubble here, you can change the I'm intimidating enough to I'm not open enough. When women share with me, I intimidate men. It's not necessarily just because you have an awesome career or because you've made a name for yourself. Sometimes the level of openness, the level of vulnerability you show up with is not what's required for a guy to not feel intimidated. For example, I'll give you an analogy. Some people say YouTube algorithm doesn't like my videos. No, replace the word algorithm with the word audience and YouTube audience doesn't like my videos. That's a different story, right? In the same vein, if you're saying guys find you intimidating, they may just not find you open enough, vulnerable enough, engaging enough, interested enough. If you shift those things, if you dial up your capacity to be present and radiant and alive, you'll find that that intimidation, regardless of how awesome you are, how much money you make, guys still find that juice to connect with you. It's when you have those things, that achievement, and that name for yourself, but the openness and the radiance and the excitement isn't there, then men find a lot harder to connect. And here's the bad, bad news of the whole thing. There's going to be guys who, despite you having closed walls and not being interested, they're going to want to connect with you. That's not the type of guy you want. You want a guy to read the room. You want a guy to be engaging with your emotions, a guy to be open to what you're sharing, a guy to want to, yes, go further when you're open and expressing that you want more. Now, before I share my last two lies, which will be very useful in you changing the trajectory you're on right now, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware of the number one reason you're still single, the root cause that's preventing you from attracting the connection you want. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women attract their ideal relationships in every part of the world you can imagine with every kind of love challenge you can think of. And I put this together in a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You'll find a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And within 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the question why you're still single and a custom report that's going to share with you based on your unique blind spot. What's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want? in a fraction of the time. Lie number four, he'll keep it together when shit hits the fan. Almost as if when guys who are incredibly masculine and strong, when something challenging happens, they'll never be afraid. They'll always know what to do. They'll take immediate action. That's not how it works. You can have an incredibly strong, intelligent, masculine guy who still doubts, who fears, who cries even. And I think that the, in this dynamic that we're in right now, women want two things. They want a guy to be able to be tender and kind enough and cry, but also strong enough to kill a bear with his bare hands. <laughs> and sometimes when men start showing that vulnerability in moments of fear, women tend to be scared because they, they feel very uncomfortable with a man showing emotion, very uncomfortable with a man crying, very uncomfortable with a man not saying, here's exactly the path we need to take. So they take over or they get really scared or they push that away. And I think that 
giving that man some space to yes, doubt, yes, fear, yes, cry, and then figure out the solution. He may not know how to express it to you. He may not even need to talk to you about it necessarily to figure out on his own. But giving him a little bit of space and understanding that men who are masculine have strong emotions, which is what I spoke about first, but also can express it in ways that are not necessarily the thing that makes you know in that moment they, they have all that it takes. You can go from not knowing, from being fearful, to being very determined in the split of a second, but giving that guy some space, giving him the room to feel, to emote, to express, to doubt, to fear, to cry, without you losing your own stuff internally, without you feeling like there's something wrong with him, I think would do wonders for you to have that transformation that needs to take place, take place, without forcing it, without feeling a lot of anxiety. The last lie that is not necessarily spoken, but is very under the radar, perceived and felt by lots of men and by lots of women, which is the measure of his worth is based on his income. What he brings to the table, the number in his bank account determines at great measure the masculinity that he can bring to the table. And I think that it's a mistake in the sense that all those certain traits that are masculine will help the guy earn more money, perhaps, and bring bacon to the home and the whole thing. You obviously want a guy who can carry his own weight. You obviously want a guy who's not relying on you necessarily emotionally or financially to, to, to make it. But at the same time, I've connected lots of women who will have a great life and who've made a great career for themselves and who will not date a guy who makes less than them. And, and I think that's a potential mistake. And the reason for that is because you can connect with a guy who makes more money than you, but might be doing it in a way that's not great for everyone around them. Or he might be one of those douchey dudes. I'm not saying he will be, but he could be, who is stepping on heads and toes to get to where he wants to go, respective of the aftermath he's leaving behind. So what you want to focus on, perhaps more than just income, even though that might be something that you consider, is... How awesome is he at what he does? How great is he at his career? How connected is he? How much contribution is he bringing to the table? Is he leaving a better world behind him? Maybe he's a school teacher. He's making a huge shift in the world. He may not be the guy who can take you to Europe in first class and pay for the whole thing, but he might carry his own weight and he might be someone who has a life of meaning, not just pleasure. So hope you find this conversation about lies that we necessarily think about sometimes black and white in terms of men something can allow you to vet men differently to approach men differently and to perhaps give guys a chance that you may have closed your hearts and dating life to more space before you rule them out because they weren't masculine enough and if you find this is helpful and useful it would mean the world to me and to my channel if you click like and subscribe if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without any for gimmicks, manipulation, tricks, or stupid techniques, then make sure to watch the next video right here.